Okay, so let's wrap up probability. So the larger the sample size, basically the more trials that you run, the more closely you expect your results to match what you expect to happen. So if you were to flip a coin a hundred times, you would expect about 50 to be heads and 50 to be tails. Sometimes you'd end up with 60, 40, but let's say you could flip that coin a million times. You're going to get closer to that 50, 50 ratio. Now, one of the issues that we end up with in science is that we have this thing called random sampling error. And basically what this means is that you are not repeating the experiment an infinite number of times. You do it just a few times. A few times might be hundreds, but it's not infinite. And so if you have a coin and you flip it only 10 times, you might get 70% heads and 30% tails. Okay. But if you flip it a thousand times, then you might get that 50 50 ratio that you're looking for. It just depends on how many times you do the experiment. <clears throat> so probability calculations and statistics are typically used to pre predict what the odds are to get a a given outcome when you're hybridizing two parents. And so there are three rules that we typically think about, but they're only, but I only really want you guys to focus on two, the sum rule and the product rule. Binomial expansion, it's very important, but that, I just want you to right now focus on the sum rule and the product rule. The sum rule usually works uh, when you're looking at one or two, what we would call mutually exclusive events that occur. Um, in other words, do you have, if you have two genes, a gene affecting ears, a normal allele or droopy ears, so normal ears would be up, droopy ears are down, and then uh, a gene affecting uh, uh, the tail, a straight tail or a crinkly tail. So this is a dihybrid cross that you're talking about here. So that would be like D, big D, little E, little D, little E, C, T, C, T. So remember, you're dealing with uh, ear shape crinkly tail or straight tail. And if you got the predicted ratio of nine to three to three to one, the four phenotypes, these four phenotypes are mutually exclusive, all right? And the mouse with droopy ears and a normal tail can't have normal ears and a crinkly tail. How do you calculate this? Here we go. Nine divided by nine plus three plus three plus one is nine over 16. And this would be normal ears and normal tail. Let's say you got one droopy ears and crinkly tail. Remember, this would have been the nine to three to three to one. This would be one sixteenth of the time. And so you add all these things, all these variables up, and you would end up with 62.5% of the time getting one, these two outcomes. Really what we're saying is that one sixteenth of the time, you'll end up with the homozygous recessive. The rest of the time, you're going to end up with homozygous dominant or heterozygous individuals. Now the product rule is a little bit more straightforward. This is where you have two or more independent events that occur um, if they're, what's a better way to describe it? This is where you have two or more independent events occurring uh, an equal number of times. Okay, and so what are we dealing with here? So in this particular case, this would be like congenital analgesia. So congenital analgesia is where people, um, they're, they're not able to feel pain, okay? So the normal allele is big P and congenital analgesia would be little p. This would be a uh, recessive trait. So congenital analgesia in this particular case, you're doing a monohybrid cross. So if you have two heterozygous individuals, big P, little p, and they plan on starting family, what are the odds that one of the children will be little p, little p? All right, well, you do your Punnett square and you know that congenital, anal congenital analgesia is little p, little p, and that's a quarter of the time. You multiply all the probabilities together and 1.6% of the time in one birth, you would end up getting congenital uh, analgesia. So the way I think about it is the sum rule, all right, the sum rule you typically use for dihybrid cross. The product rule you use for monohybrid cross. All right. What am I going to ask you guys to do on the exam? Not binomial expansion. So let's skip that for now. Keep going. The reason why we're not doing this is because um, 
there's no math uh, prerequisite for this course, so I'm leaving you guys alone on this part for now. Having said that, these are common tests that are used to test the potential outcome for or the potential odds that an individual will have a given phenotype. So here we go, through the chi-square. I should have just taken this out. So basically, many of our uh, genetics uh, examples will be using a chi-square analysis to determine whether or not uh, there's a probability that an individual will show a certain phenotype. We will get into this maybe a little bit more when we talk more about human um, uh, transmission traits. Uh, but for now, I just want you to focus on the product and sum rule. All right, that's it for chapter three. Um, this is all the information that you're going to need for the first exam. Uh, the study guide has been posted, and the first exam is coming up next week. So get ready. Please be sure to ask questions, and I will hopefully talk to you soon.